Hello, it's Alex, the Bookubus. I'm back with another Nightmare Queens video where I talk about vintage horror from the 1970s, 80s and 90s written by women and today I'm going to be talking about The Mist in the Mirror by Susan Hill. The Mist in the Mirror by Susan Hill was originally published in 1993 and this is a tale of the supernatural told in a kind of classic Victorian style. We follow a character called Sir James Monmouth, don't you know? And he is originally from England but he was orphaned as a child and went to live with a guardian in Africa. As he was growing up he was a really big reader and one of the things he really enjoyed reading about was travellers and adventurers and their tales from various countries around the world. And one of these explorers in particular became James's hero, a man called Conrad Vane. So some years later when James is able to set off and do some travelling of his own he decides to follow in Conrad Vane's footsteps and around the world he goes. James decides that he not only wants to follow in Conrad's footsteps with regards to the travelling but he really wants to find out more about this guy, his background and his history and eventually he wants to write a book about him. So he decides to travel to England and follow some leads on where Conrad Vane grew up and went to school and try and do some research. So James arrives in London and on his way to find some accommodations he sees this young boy who has kind of a haunted expression and seems to be following him and over the next few days as James stays in London and does some exploring he sees this boy a couple more times but every time he tries to approach him something happens or there's some kind of distraction and when he turns back the boy is no longer there. So he has this sense that he's being watched and being followed but he doesn't know exactly what's going on. Anyway, James does meet a couple of people in various different places in England who have some information on Conrad Vane but each time these people are trying to dissuade James from pursuing this research and it seems that maybe this Conrad Vane had a dark side to his character and some secrets in his past. But James is not to be deterred, he really wants to find out more about him so on with his reading and research he goes. In doing so and in travelling around the country James also finds out some things about his own past and his own family and maybe there are some dark secrets there too. So I quite enjoyed this one, I ended up rating it three and a half stars, it was a good read but not a completely satisfying one unfortunately. There were some things I liked about it and some things that didn't quite work for me so I'll start off with the positives. This one definitely delivers on the writing style if you like that classic Victorian ghost story style then this is done really really well in that kind of vein but it's also really readable as well you don't have to try too hard to get into the writing style and I found this writing to be incredibly atmospheric and evocative you know you can feel the cold draughts in the room and you can hear the rain lashing the windows and all of that good stuff. Some of the story is set in London and even though it was at a time period long before I lived there for some years there were still places that I was familiar with so it was really cool to be able to really picture the scene as well. I also really liked the characters 
Sir James Monmouth. It was just really interesting to follow him as a character and follow his story. There are several fairly colourful characters throughout the story and I thought they were all well written and they all had fantastic names too, like Dr Valentine Dancer and Lady Quinsbridge. I really enjoyed the mystery element of the story as James is trying to find out information and he uncovers various things and there are some twists and turns in the story so I did like that mystery aspect and there are some creepy moments too. Like I said, the writing is very atmospheric and there are definitely some creepy moments within the story of a potentially supernatural nature that were well done and quite effective. But that does lead me on to talk about a few of the things that didn't quite work for me in this one. One of them being those creepy moments and unfortunately a lot of them felt like they were just kind of forced in there to have, you know, your stereotypical creepy moment rather than it actually having a point to the story and actually being relevant and necessary to the story. And I think my main issue with this book was the fact that while I enjoyed the elements of the story as I was reading it, they just didn't really come together in a satisfying way and I did feel a bit let down, a bit disappointed by the way it ended, which is a shame. Another thing that wasn't necessarily a detractor of my enjoyment of the book overall, but just something that I don't think particularly worked, was the fact that this is told as a story within a story. So at the beginning we're introduced to another character who then meets Sir James Monmouth and he is basically reading James's story. So I know that format can work really well, I just don't know if it was A really necessary for this particular story and B that it particularly worked very well. But yeah, even though I did have a few issues with the book overall, it was still a good read, I did still enjoy it for the most part and I rated it three and a half stars. I would say that if you have read Susan Hill before and you enjoy her writing then yeah definitely check this one out. If you haven't yet read any of hers then I would maybe suggest first picking up The Woman in Black because that one I thought was amazing, it was a five star read for me. So even though I did have some issues with this book overall there were still a lot of elements that I really liked, the writing, the characters, the atmosphere, I thought they were all really well done. It's just a bit of a shame that the story didn't quite stick the landing. If you are looking for that classic Victorian style of supernatural story then I would still definitely recommend picking this one up. It's perfect for those cold nights when you can cuddle up with a blanket and I don't know a glass of port or a hot chocolate or something. So those were my thoughts on The Mist in the Mirror by Susan Hill. Let me know if you've read this one, I would love to hear your thoughts. Thank you ever so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and hopefully I will see you again in my next video. Bye!